Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Drew back again with another video for all you American soccer fans out there today. A video way different than what we're used to here on the channel today. We, we will be reacting to some of the worst USA slash MLS soccer takes um, that you guys have submitted yourselves to me on Twitter, which you guys will see right here. I did post a tweet on the Twitter saying, send me your worst soccer MLS takes and we'll make a video about it. And first of all, all you guys who replied and are following me, shout out to you guys. Big win for you. If you're not following me, you guys can see it right here on the screen. This is where you can find me at on Twitter. I would love it. So, because if this video does well, if you guys really liked and engaged with this video, we will do more because there will always be more soccer takes because Alexi Lalas and Matt Doyle will never stop talking about it. So there's going to be a lot more. And if you want me to, to uh, react to your submission, then, or your request, then definitely follow the Twitter. And when I post it again, you guys can definitely tweet at me from that. So, we have a lot of fun things to react to. A lot of just like dumb shit. Okay, I'll be honest. Um... And we'll get to the big ones I know you guys are waiting for at the end. First, let's do your tweets. Okay, I'm trying to do this whole new setup here. So if it's a little bad, my apologies. I'm just still new at this. I'll get better at it. So first up is my boy Yank Report. Sam, what up, bro? Thanks for tweeting at me. Um, he wrote to me, goals are overrated. We shouldn't freak out every time some player somewhere scores a couple goals. Context is important. Give me better player rather than the one who happened to score a goal that weekend. Okay. Got it. So, I don't know if he's talking about players like Matthew Hoppy, a player like um, Sibiachu. I've, I've totally bombed that name. Uh, but, yeah, players like that. You know, Sibiachu scoring goals in the Europa League for uh, young boys who played in the Swiss League, scoring goals there too. Matthew Hoppy scoring goals out of nowhere, then out of nowhere just kind of fell off again, really not scoring as many goals because his team sucks. Um, are goals overrated? Yeah, I agree because... I am, if you guys don't know, I'm not really on the Matthew Hoppy train. I think I do want him in our roster eventually, but right now, he's just to me more of a like a, a squad play. He's not a starter for me. He's not a backup to Josh Sargent. I would rather, much rather see Daryl DK be a backup to, to Josh Sargent right now. Um, so yeah, I see where you're coming from, Sam. I like that. Let's go to the next one. Next one here is from Jay Hondo, 81. What up, bro? Um, he said Greg Berhalter should take a page from Tuchel's successful tactics and only use Pulisic as a late game substitute that is a bad take uh, because as many of you Pulisic fans out there and Chelsea fans I'm sure we it sucks to see Pulisic not being on his great run of form that he, he was earlier in his Chelsea career uh, just even earlier this year like injuries have kind of plagued him but then also now the new manager switch he's kind of been like out of favor um and I don't like that. And I also would not like to see Greg Berhalter take that page from Tuchel's um, tactics because I want to see Pulisic, our golden boy, really start the first game, start the beginning of the game. If he's got to get subbed out, he'll get subbed out. But I need to see him starting all the time if healthy. Next one. This one's from Berhalter, question mark. I hardly know her. <laughs> um, he says something crazy right here. Bradley's still a starter until he kills over as at the Azteca. Um... <laughs> I don't know if this is your real take, bro, um, but this is not This is not it, Chief. Okay, Bradley is nowhere near starter potential right now for the USMNT. He had a terrible season with Toronto last year. He's just been not in the best form at club level especially, and why even bring him to the national team when we have so much more depth in that position? Michael, um, fucking Tyler Adams, Weston McKinney, like Jackson Ewell even. Like, come on, a lot more players up ahead of Bradley. It's a bad take. Next one, here we got Christopher, Rose Particle. What up, bro? Thanks for this. Uh, the best the best is behind us, and now we are going to keep giving kids injury problems, pushing them past their limit. Um, I agree, and I don't agree. I agree that, you know, maybe some players are being pushed too young, and that way, when they're a little older, they will have more injuries, or even a little bit younger than expected, will have more severe injuries. I, I see that, because... The game is more fast-paced. The game has evolved even more. And, and the people train, the guys training, have to evolve with it, but not without injuries. But the best is not behind us. If you're talking about USMNT, it ain't. It's just getting started. We're taking over the world, baby. Next, Golasso, man. What up? Bucker Jr.'s boy. Uh, Donovan is the GOAT. Okay. Donovan, to 90% of USMNT fans, is the GOAT player for the USMNT. But for me, your boy Drew on the channel, I, I, I respect Donovan. He is a legend. He's definitely up there. But to me, I always favored 
Clint Dempsey. I was more of a Clint Dempsey kind of fan. I did toggle back and forth, but I think I'm starting to settle down with Clint Dempsey. I think he was the more proven player abroad. Donovan really didn't have that success abroad. He was young when he went to Bayer Leverkusen in Germany. Really didn't do well there. He didn't fit in mentally there. He just, you know, I respect that. But he never really went back out to try it again when he was older and more mature. I know he had loan spells at Everton, but he never really made an impact. And if he did, they probably would have offered him a really big deal. Um, but he did not. He hard, he didn't score any goals. I, don't, I think he scored one goal in Ever for Everton and gave one assist in those, like, couple seasons that he did that loan spell there. So, the, whereas Clint Dempsey made the Europa League final with Fulham. They lost to, I think, Atletico Madrid, um, but they nearly won it. He did a terrific Europa League campaign. He had a terrific uh, career in general with Fulham. Decent career, not even really that good with Tottenham Hotspur. But then again, Tottenham Hotspur back then was absolute garbage compared to how they are now. But Clint Dempsey, I know he retired in MLS, but he was more proven at a higher level than Donovan always was. And he also performed for the national team, and he's also the tied top goal scorer with Donovan. So what's the deal here? Next one. That's me. Um, <laughs> this one from my boy, The States FC. If you're not subscribed to his channel on YouTube, subscribe to that. And also follow him on Twitter right here. Because he followed your boys, Drew. So he's, he's all right in my book. Um, I made the mistake. I made this take a couple weeks ago. I thought of something interesting. If Tyler Adams is hurt for World Cup qualifying and Berhalter won't play West at the 6, is it worth playing John Brooks in the 6 if McKenney and Richards develop Ray and place together at center back interesting i don't think that's a bad take i mean that's not a bad take that's that's more of like you're kind of thinking about uh the alternatives is if tyler adams was hurt how could we switch a formation switch a team to utilize our players in their best positions as, as possible um i wouldn't be opposed to that sure why not next oh that's it so now it's time <laughs> Now it's time for the big guns. Okay, let's start off first for the bad take that just dropped literally today. You can see it, the date. It's timestamp right here, forever in history. Um, and it's never going to go away, dude. This is, of course, from none other than MLS correspondent Matt Doyle. Now, we all know Matt Doyle as the MLS dude. Um, and some of you guys know him as the guy who really just, for some reason, seems to always give little digs to European American players abroad. Uh, American players who are playing abroad. He gives a little jab at them, but for MLS players, he's like a little more lenient, it looks like. Um, and I, I, I'm in that camp too. I kind of see that sometimes, but he's a little bias, a little biasism right there. But he is working for MLS. You got to cut him some slack there. He's got to represent the league. But what a dumb way to do it sometimes. So let's check it out. Let's dive deep into what's going on <laughs> today with this whole mental thing. I'm surprised he wasn't trending. If soccer was a bigger sport in America, he would definitely be trending. So, this dude over here, Official Wolfie, said, If the USMT doesn't win a World Cup in the next decade, it could be one of the biggest flops in football history. This team has too much talent. I, first of all, agree with that. If we don't win that World Cup in 2026, that is a flop. If we don't even make it to the final and just nearly win it, that, that would be, uh, I would be disappointed as well. I need to see us at least in the final, challenging other countries for that. If we're hyping up our players, we need to really push for that World Cup win. So, your, do your boy over here, Matt Doyle, said, Siri, how do I delete someone else's tweet? Meaning, I'm assuming he didn't like it, he, he disagreed with it, I get it. So, he further goes on further to say, I'm excited we got Musa too, but he lost his starting spot for the 12th best team in La Liga two months ago. Our other young super prospect, Gio Reyna, had a two goal, two goal, three assists in his first six games and has two goals, one assist in his subsequent 27. <sighs> Our star has basically dropped, been dropped from Chelsea's rotation. Can't, I can't argue that last part. Our best young center back prospect was not in Bayern's plans and was loaned out. Our second best young CB prospect has been dropped by Genk. The guy most considered to be our top left back plays for a relegation bound EPL side and has most, mostly lost his starting spot over the past month. Our best right back has struggled badly defensively whenever he faces elite competition. Our best D midfield uh, plays RB for his club. Our number one keeper is a backup. We have more talent than ever before. This is true, but as a fan base, uh, but we as a fan base should have a perspective here. Uh, and this guy said the rejoinder is both elegant and fair. I don't know. Okay, so 
Yes, everyone's freaking triggered. Everyone's mad. Your boy Drew is triggered as well. I even tweeted at Matt Doyle um, saying, Drew, let's come, come to the channel and talk about it. This guy never going to come to the freaking channel. If you guys are watching this right now, I would love it if you go to Matt, Ch Matt Doyle's Twitter and say, go on the channel. Go on Kicking It With Drew's channel and just tag me in it. I would really love to see him here. I want to not to really debate him, but I want to talk about USA Soccer with him personally. Instead of just reading his tweets, I want to talk about him, talk about it with him personally. So let's try to make it happen, okay? Either Matt Doyle or the, the other guy we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, so reacting to this, um, first of all, he he seems salty. He seems like he's like trying to find little digs there, like I said, to our American abroad players. Is he wrong with some of his stats? No, he's not wrong. Uh, a lot of our players, like like, like he said with um, our start at Chelsea, Pulisic has been dropped. He has been dropped. Giorena, of course, they're not scoring the most goals, but nonetheless, a fucking talented player that is always like looking exciting and looking fresh while he's playing for Dortmund. If he wasn't playing good, if he wasn't playing like he had some potential there, then he wouldn't be freaking starting him at Dortmund or even subbing him in at Dortmund either. Um... The best young prospect center back for uh, that was not in Bayern's plan, Chris Richards. He actually was in uh, Bayern's plans. The manager Hansik Flick did want did not want him to go out on loan, but then he decided that it would be better for him to get more playing time. I'll put that tweet up here for you to fact check that. Um, for Genk, I haven't really followed Mark McKenzie over at Genk too much, so I can't really reply on that. Um, but for Yunus Musa, yeah, like I said, same thing with Giorena, not playing too well, whatever. But he is still being played at some, you know, sub it in, starting some games, like sub it in most of it. But if he wasn't playing well, if the team did not really trust him or see any potential with him, they would not be playing him at all. They'd be looking for other alternatives. But he's still getting some playing time. Um, the left back situation with Anthony Robinson, yeah. Anthony Robinson is a player who I would much rather see play at an, a different club. He was actually on my one of my players to leave their club. Um, but... And it probably will happen. If Fulham does get relegated, he will definitely leave. He's better. For, he's too much, too good for the championship, um, and too good for Fulham. He, he's a, he's got high potential. I really have faith in Anthony Robinson. I don't know what this dude's uh, problem is, but I rate Anthony Robinson a lot. He's definitely our starting left back. And as for our starting right back, Sergino Des, one of the most talented players you will say has ever had, and probably ever will have. He is uh, with his feet so quick, so. So skillful, he can move the ball around real quick, he can cross, he can try to shoot sometimes. He almost scored against PSG. He knows how to be like a trickster with his feet, with the ball. Um, and as for his defensive uh, capabilities, yeah, maybe not the strongest. Still just a young kid, still learning, playing. To, he, just, he came from Ajax, playing in the Dutch League, to freaking playing for Barcelona against top elite performers in like within one year. That's not on the, like you gotta give him some time to really be settling in there and getting adjusted and getting his, his feet adjusted to that kind of freaking mentality there. Um, I really have a lot of faith in, in Sergio Des, and as does Barcelona. I know he took over Sergio Roberto's spot after being injured, but he is gonna. I have no doubt as a Barca fan myself, diehard for over over ten years, he definitely will keep that starting spot at right back because he adds so much more width, so much more talent and skill on the right flank for Barcelona that they definitely need. He's like a little mini Danny Alves there, and I love that. So he will definitely still run circles and start over anybody from MLS. Okay, we have to go now and talk about the big guy himself. Um, I was sent by my boy, US17 Universe over here on Twitter. Um, some stuff from, of course, Alexi Lalas always has something crazy and controversial to say that a lot of us don't really agree with for the most part i have like a love hate relationship with this dude i like um some of the stuff he says but the majority of it um i don't like okay i'll be honest um and these two clips i've seen so far right now that i'm gonna watch i watched them before when they came out and i was like dude what the hell are you saying bro <laughs> so let's get to it first let's talk about this one um if i can play it if i get copyrighted fox you suck but for the most part He's talking about, let's see. At times, it looked like he was trying to do everything himself, but taking on two and three players at a time and his quickness and his... Oops, yeah, so he's talking about the a game with uh, Chelsea against Man City back in January, uh, which uh, I remember this game because I remember watching, I think Zach Steffen was in goal in this game, and I was like, I want Christian Bullish to score, but then I want Zach Steffen to keep a clean sheet, so I don't know how to feel. Um, but yeah, Man City obviously won. And Chelsea, whatever, but 
Pulisic, he was right. Pulisic was a good player on the, on that night for Chelsea, so I can't argue with that. But then he has to say this big thing where, like, he's... Yeah, this part. I mean, I'll say it right now. Christian Pulisic is too good for this Chelsea team. <clears throat> Um, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> Though, saying that, maybe that night, maybe he was a better player that night. Possibly, yeah. You can argue that. But just the fact that the cringe level of having American soccer fans really overrate their players. Like, Christian Pulisic is not overrated to me, but just the fact that we are, like, putting him above every other player in Chelsea. Which, uh, to believe me, to be honest, I, I don't believe to be true. I think Pulisic is not the best player at Chelsea. I don't think he's... You know, the top two. Um, who are the top two? Don't ask me because I don't really watch Chelsea too much, but I know he's not up there. Um, so just the fact that we have an American soccer analyst saying that, that's what's embarrassing to to me and to other, many, other, uh, many other of you guys out there. Especially my boy USM, USM T Universe over here. You can see that he's saying, what the fuck are you doing? I like Stuart Holden's response to this, who is actually not agree with this. Stuart Holden, another dude that's like... Something he says stupid shit, you know? <laughs> um, so let's go back to the other one that was sent to me by Alexi Lalas. And of course, it's this big one. Right now, Brad Guzan is the number one for the United States. Let's hear so that again. Luton. Right now, Brad Guzan is the number one for the United States. Okay. That is the one that really grinds my gears the most. Brad Guzan was not playing his best with Landa. Thank you, my boy, US17 Universe, um, for reminding me. <laughs> um, the, I don't care. This also goes back. This also goes back to Matt Doyle's response to like Zach Steffen, basically basically calling him out. Um, I don't care if Zach Steffen is on the bench for Man City. I don't care if he plays cup games. I don't care because he's still the better goalkeeper. He is still our number one goalkeeper, and he is still getting better playing experience than other players in MLS. Matt Turner is a guy I really rate. He's a good good goalkeeper. Probably my, my number three choice in the goalkeeper pool overall. Probably behind Zach Steffen and I think Ethan Horvath and then Matt Turner. Um, but it, it's, it's a different field. They're playing and going up against different players. Yes, Zach Steffen really covers Ederson while he's injured, but also Zach Steffen plays games in the Carmel Cup, the FA Cup, um, he's played in those games up against better opponents than MLS can offer, better strikers than MLS can offer. So he's put up against better shots than Bad Guzan or anybody in MLS is going to go up against in MLS. It's like, does that make sense to you guys? Because it makes fucking sense to me. Like, I, he's getting better training there. Okay, he's getting better experience time there. He's getting better playing time there. He is a backup to one of the best goalkeepers in the world right now. So it's not like he's a backup to fucking, like, some guy in, like, I don't know, Everton or something, okay? He's not like he's some backup like that. He's a backup to one of the best goalkeepers. So it's if anything, it's going to push him more to be a better goalkeeper himself to one day take that throne of being a number one starter at Man City. But for the most part, right now, he just got to the team officially. Like, he was there and got loaned out, but he's just got to the team um, to start a season with, a full season with them. So, and he's playing games. I don't know what the big deal is. He's playing games and he's better ever than Bad Guzan. Like I said earlier in my channels before, my, my channel videos, I never felt comfortable with Brad Guzan in goal for the USMNT. Once Tim Howard retired, I was like, damn, we're fucking stuck with this other dude, Brad Guzan. And I never felt comfortable with him. Sure, say what you want, how he was at Atlanta. I know he had some good games, but for the most part... I never, ever felt like Brad Guzan should have been our number one. Zach Steffen, I'm so glad he's in our, in our pool right now because he is the GOAT. <clears throat> well, not the GOAT. Like, you know what I mean. Like, he's the best goalkeeper we have right now. <laughs> well, that's all I have for you guys today. How did you like this reaction video? Let me know down below. Do you want to see more of them? And if you do, be sure to follow my Twitter and Instagram and hit me up with more bad soccer takes. Because if you guys hit me up with some more, I will definitely do another reaction video on those um i think this could be a kind of a little series regular we could have here reacting to soccer bad soccer takes could be a little cool segment we have on the channel so let me know how you guys feel about that well that's all i have for you guys today let me know how you guys felt about this whole new type of video we have here on the channel if you want to see more of these reaction type videos here um be sure to follow my instagram and twitter linked down below Hit me up with some more bad U.S. soccer takes or even good ones. I don't care. Or anything else you would like me to react to, whether it be highlights, games, anything, other teams, whatever you'd like. 
related to USA Soccer and MLS. We could definitely do it. I think that could be a cool little segment reacting to bad USA Soccer takes. I think it's a cool video series we could have here on the channel. So let me know your thoughts down below on any of these soccer takes. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.